Hello Drive Radio fans, Richard Rush here today with my dad John Rush behind the camera and this is the review of the 2017 Infiniti QX80. This is the all-wheel drive limited model. So that's an ou a mouthful, but really it is. This is the QX80. This is the limited trim level, which basically means there's no options. Everything that you see on this vehicle is standard on this trim level, which comes with the price tag attached, which with destination is right at $91,000. And some of you are going to say, oh my gosh, that's pretty big. Keep in mind what this vehicle is competing with. The Lexus, LX, the, the LX570, the Mercedes-Benz, uh, the, the exact models. Uh, missing me. I believe it's the GL for something, but the uh, Mercedes-Benz model, this actually competes with the uh, Cadillac um, with their with their bigger model. So this is definitely a top of the line in its class in terms of luxury. Uh, a few things for 2017, just some minor changes. We did review this vehicle last year. They've added to the forward emergency braking system, pedestrian detection. Uh, trailer sway control is also um, added on here, and there's also some different color palettes in terms of the interior and the exterior. But with that being said, Dad, why don't we take a quick look around. One thing that you'll notice on this vehicle is obviously the exterior styling. It's got a nice rounded look to it. It's got a massive front grille, very distinctive lighting on here. This vehicle, one thing that we've noticed based on comments from people after driving this for the past week is the styling on this vehicle is just very much you know when you're driving down the road. Uh, when we tend to review vehicles, or when we review vehicles, we tend to be able to kind of notice them more on the road. And one thing I did notice, you'll, you'll notice is you got the, the venting right here with the 5.6 liter V8 badging there. This car definitely, I should say, this SUV definitely has a distinctive styling to it. It's a, a very much, um, you know this car when it's driving down the road, which isn't a bad thing. It, it has a lot of character, I guess, I, I see is how I would describe this car. So what's included uh, a little bit on the, uh, I guess, the, the 2016 QX80? Well, pretty much everything. You're going to have an infotainment system on the inside. You've got a 360-degree camera system, the around view monitoring, driver assistance, which includes adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, lane departure warning and intervention, frontal collision warning and intervention. Uh, you've got all sorts of different safety features on this vehicle. We're here along the back. You notice this, this bumper. Uh, again, a nice round, that nice rounded look that continues throughout. They've got a nice chrome on the top. You'll notice the limited badging right here uh, along the back. This platform is actually built on the Nissan Patrol, which for 26 actually is very similar to the Armada platform. We're actually getting one of those here very, very soon. And we'll review those and kind of compare because it's a very similar platform. But with that being said, one thing I would note, Nissan and yes, this or sorry, Infinity, and this is going to be an opinion. Uh, $91,000 car, please put the windshield wiper up here. Build it in. Uh, you find this on a Chevrolet Tahoe, that's about $20,000 less. I would really like to find it on this vehicle. So just build it in. Lexus does the same thing, just something that, that I really like to add. So with that, we're gonna open up the trunk. You can push that button or you can also use it from the key fob. We do have the third row down currently and we're gonna show you how putting that up works here in just a second. But as you can see, really quite a bit of room. These do not go flat. They are all the way down. However, they do not go flat. In terms of room, as it sits right here, you've got 49.6 cubic feet of room. If we were to put the second row down, which you can actually do from the front, um, from the driver's seat, you get 95 cubic feet. And really quick, Dad, why don't we show them what it looks like to bring both of these things up. So you got, you just push this, it's going to bring everything up with both third rows and we'll just bring them up with the third row up you have 16.6 cubic feet of cargo room. So not a whole lot, it is a little bit smaller. I actually did have some um, friends in here th this past week and they mentioned it's a little bit cramped for adults. So I don't know if you could fit a full size adult back here for a, a long road trip, but definitely something that can work um, in terms of a little storage. And I know that they had this, so I apologize for the mat right here, but you do have a little bit of storage underneath here, which makes it nice again for a, a med kit, uh, um, some extra support, Applies, whatever it might be some nice toe tow hooks right along here and you do have an outlet obviously a power closing rear hatch which is really nice um, this vehicle properly equipped 
can tow up to 8,500 pounds, which is a pretty good number for this vehicle. And down here, if we were to take this off, is where the trailer hitch is going, or the receiver hitch is gonna be at. Now let's just hop right into the, the second row seating here. I'll hop in, nice grab handle right here. You do have some running boards. Um, really nice, obviously spacious second row seating here. You do have heated seats for both, um, both outer seats, obviously, and, and you do have a big center console. The ability to control the uh, air back here, so third row control. Um, real quick, we'll show you the kind of the apportionments on the door. Be very beautiful. I'm going to say beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Nice wood grain right here. Very nice soft touch leather. Nice thick leather too. It's not, it's not something that you feel like you're going to tear into at all. Really nice stitching throughout the cabin. Uh, just They've just done an ex exceptional job in, in how they've pieced everything together from just kind of the wave in the seats to just overall everything about this vehicle in terms of the interior. Very, very nice. Nice wood grain everywhere in it. You do have a nice center console here, which is relatively deep that you could put the headphones that are actually in the side pocket there. Nice suede all throughout in terms of the headliner. Uh, you'll notice, obviously, you've got your individual screens right here, which is really nice. Um, we'll get into the opinion portion, kind of what we think of the entertainment uh, system and all of that. Uh, other than that, very easy to get in and out of. Obviously, this is only seating for six in here right now. You could put that, actually take that back. You can fit a seventh person in the back seat, although it's going to be very, very tight. So something to note there. Um, in terms of the, the third row seating, you can do that, fold that down. This gives you really easy access. You can also do that from the front seat. We'll show you that here in just a second. You, know, you can do that, and you'll notice in there. And actually, Dan, I'll just I'll climb in. Let's show people kind of what that looks like. So really, I feel like you're, you're pretty cramped as you can see. Actually, if I fold this down, you'll kind of see. It's, it's hard to see, but I don't have a ton of room. I kind of have to go catty corner with my knees here in order to fit. So again, for some smaller kids, whatever might be very easy. One thing to note, and I just noticed this, is you've got buttons back here to actually put these seats up. So it actually allows me... To, sorry, not buttons for the seats, but buttons for these back. It actually allows me to adjust this third row seating right from in here. And if I want to get out, I just flip this down like that. Everything pops up and I'm able to slide out just like that. So with that being said, we'll pause the video and we'll hop into the front seat. All right, fans, here's a quick front seat uh, perspective. Uh, real quick, want to show you the, the door apportionments there. Very similar to the back seat, some nice storage there for some maps or, or for a cup holder there. That same leather and wood grain they've carried up throughout and they've just, it's really very, very beautifully apportioned on the inside. Again, some nice, beautiful stitching, the kind of the, the chrome, looking piping or the silver piping I should say. The beautiful stitching in the headrest is really really nice. They've carried the wood grain throughout and that, they've actually made a little bit of a change in terms of the wood grain. is more of a flat grain versus 2016 was a little bit of a glossy glossy finish to it so something to note. Um, really nice deep um, center console here. You do have your power port right here. Also the ability to plug in uh, a video or a gaming console or something like that if you wanted to for the back um, seat. So er everything else is pretty much standard on what you would find from Infinity. The standard uh, infotainment display system that they've been known for, uh, Infinity and Nish Nissan I should say. Dual climate controls, heated and ventilated or cooled seats I should say, heated steering wheel, a lot of other uh, nice apportionments on it, but we can talk about those in the driving portion. So we're going to pause the video, uh, get everything situated, and we'll take a quick drive in the 2017 Infiniti QX80. All right, fans, here we are for the driving portion. I actually put my sunglasses on here really quick. Uh, real quick before we get driving, I want to show you the interior. Apologize for the shadows early morning here in Colorado in, in mid-December, so it makes sure things a little bit different. Um, Everything, as we mentioned before, is pretty much standard in what you would find um, from Infinity. They haven't done ma very many changes at all. There is a new infotainment system that Infinity's trying out. I hope they bring that to this vehicle. Um, we get you get used to the Infinity infotainment system over time. It's not terrible to use, but it's also not the easiest, in our opinion at least. So if you really like it and find it easy to use, then you can uh, definitely take that with a grain of salt. Real quick, do you want to show you the reverse of the cameras? And you also got the 360 degree around view monitoring system. So we'll back up here 
and I'll actually show you here in just a second again I really apologize for the shadows I know it's not easy so we'll actually turn it around so you can see it better you do have the dynamic grid lines like we like to call it, it actually shows you where the steering wheel is at where you're gonna turn as you put it into drive you can actually hit the camera mode right here this is the front of the vehicle right here so if you were pulling into a tight parking space something like that you wanted to see how close you were to the car in front of you you can hit that camera button and it's going to show you that right there and again the 360 degree camera system allows you to see how close you are to a curb if you maybe you're pulling in along the street works really really well so, so just something to note and it will go away as we get up to speed here in a little bit as you can see there so what's underneath the hood 5.6 liter v8 400 horsepower um, right around the same amount of torque uh, again can tow up to 25 or 8500 pounds i should say this vehicle weighs six about just over six thousand pounds so just over three tons very heavy vehicle however does not necessarily drive like a heavy vehicle uh infinity i should say i apologize has got what's called on here i want to make sure i got this right called a hydraulic body motion control system that's a fancy way of saying it reduces body roll so when you are in this car you actually don't feel i should say in this suv you don't feel a whole lot of body roll that you would from a heavier vehicle it's just they've infinity did a whole lot to reduce that from the hydraulics all sorts of different things the ride quality is really really i think it is really really fantastic it's very comfortable uh, the 22 inch wheels make things a little bit noisier than maybe they need to be but when you get the fully loaded kind of stock limited this is what you get in, in terms of that but overall ride quality really really nice fuel economy i believe we were at 13 and 19 with an average of 15 and currently i want to just tell you where we are at I can skip through we've been averaging 16 miles per gallon so we're right in there and that's with me doing quite a bit of the driving uh, just based on the fuel economy of it it's got a nice large tank you're gonna be able to go about 400 miles on it but uh, again your fuel economy if, if you're worried about that sort of thing and you're buying this vehicle for that uh, may not be the best option for you just because you're not gonna be able to capitalize on uh, I, I, you're not really going to be saving a whole lot of gas driving this vehicle uh, road noise you don't have a lot of again I mentioned the uh, the, the 22 inch wheels here and overall drives really really well it's got a seven speed transmission in here works fantastic is an absolute breeze to drive I know some people have commented on the um, I guess abilities I'm gonna put that down maybe help with my um, lighting I know some people have commented on the ability of this car to maybe be too nimble and it, it doesn't feel suv-ish enough why well, I, I don't know if that can be the case but for us it was not a big deal at all so with that being said we're going to get into our opinion i'm going to give you mine actually I'm going to have my dad give you his uh what do i think of this car i love a lot of things about it even the price tag for what you get on this car it's very luxurious on the inside fantastic car to drive and ride in got several compliments from uh several different people that rode in it few things i would change the screens on the headrest, I think that they should be bigger and newer. If you look at the new Toyota Land Cruisers, they've got the big, huge 10-inch screens that are individual. I think that that needs to be an upgrade infinity and also the infotainment system. And if you change those two things and everything else was the same, I think you would have a, whole, a grand slam rather than just a home run in my opinion. So I, I love how, how this car handles everything about it. Dad, what were your thoughts? Uh, same as yours. The vehicle works just absolutely fabulous. Fun to drive. I actually like this car better than I do, say, the Escalade, for example. Mm -hmm. I just think there's more features on it than what you get on an Escalade. A little disappointed in the infotainment system, but that can be uh, looked over. Great vehicle. I enjoy mm -hmm. driving it. Absolutely. And, and I want to make sure we clarify. The infotainment, the entertainment system is not going to necessarily prevent us from driving, buying this car. I don't know if any system, unless it's just so otherworldly bad, should ever do that for you. But you have to be the judge, which leads us to our always our final point. Get out, put your family in this car, put a car seat in this car if you think that's what you're going to use this vehicle for. Test drive it, see if it's the car for you, see if you can handle some of the different quirks and such that are on this vehicle. If you do that, tell them that John and Richard Rush from Drive Radio sent you.